Hi, my name is Abu Francis, and let me demonstrate uh, what I'm doing for creating a demo uh, using the known email API. So I have a, a couple of windows or three windows which I have opened. Uh, one is uh, my trusted uh, Win SCP uh, that is connected to my uh, server. And um, if you see in the demo.known.email directory, there are two subdirectories. So this is the root of uh, my server, uh, my website. And just outside the root, I've created a folder called data. Now inside this uh, 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 root folder, I have created a index.php. So if I double click that, it will come into my uh, Windows Studio code, uh, which is the second uh, window I want to show. So as you can see, it really doesn't have anything in it. I've just written a welcome message kind of thing. So now what I'll do is I'll just show the other window, which is which is where it says demo coming soon. So this is what uh, our uh, playground would be. And um, let me open up uh, one specific page, which is there in known email. And I'll use that as a reference uh, for for uh, doing my coding. So this is called known email slash API test API dot PHP. So this particular uh, uh, testing ground has got uh, enough information about what to do and uh, how we can go about using the API. So the first thing I will do is that instead of using this, if you use this particular form, you can then uh, uh, send messages to uh, yourself in your own account. That's how it works within this particular uh, uh, site because it is originating from known.email. It will not allow you to send messages to anybody else other than your own account. So you can do certain tests. Uh, in fact, all the tests uh, for all the API. We don't have any API calls. It's very easy to understand. So, and it is also given the source code of this utility itself. So what I will do first is I will just open that uh, link and I will copy that and I will open up a temporary file, which I will not really save. And I will uh, use that as a kind of my reference. So this code has got some simple API calls and a couple of uh, utilities. For example, it has got this utility uh, for doing curl operations or you can say rest operations. So I'll just copy these two functions uh, and I will put them here uh, for the time being. So what this does is that this is the function which actually does the calling of the API and it requires your merchant secret and then it will uh, uh, ask for certain parameters and based on those parameters, it will actually do the HTTP call, uh, which has got all the correct headers and all that. So when you're sending uh, an API call to the known, uh, known email API, you need to ensure that uh, these two headers are available. First header is x-known-dom. That is a domain name for which uh, this particular uh, uh, PHP code will work. Uh, and and then the second one is uh, x-known-acc and that should contain the merchant secret. Now this is all in PHP, but if you were to do this in um, Node.js or uh, Java or whatever, you can do the equivalent thing. Basically what these two functions do, uh, I could have probably written this as one function itself, but I split it up into two parts. So what it does is it eventually calls the REST API. So this is a REST API call and it uh, uses all these options of these headers and all that and it, it calls as a post uh, method. Uh, in our API, uh, since the API is extremely simple, uh, there is only a uh, post method and uh, so you don't have to worry about anything else much. So let me get back into uh, this uh, actual coding. What I will do is that I'll, rec I'll, be, I'll be recording this in parts. Um, I'm doing it for the first time, so you'll have to pardon any video glitches and it may sound a little lengthy, but actually it's very short. But since I'm not an expert in recording this, this, uh, uh, this kind of recording using uh, OBS, I am going to do this in parts and so I will explain it in parts so there may be some uh, what do you say um, you know glitches here and there but you should get the entire thing so this is the first step of the whole story where uh, I am preparing the ground for calling the API using this uh, directory structure so the directory structure once again I'm telling you is that this is my website uh, and in that sorry this is my server and in that server I have two directories and this is the root directory in which all the work will get done so see you in the second part okay let me move to the second segment of this uh, video showing how to use uh, the API calls for doing a passwordless entry. So what I've done now is I have created an additional file, uh, which I will not show you, but I will explain what it is. So this file merge secret.php, I have placed it in the same root folder of this demo. And this contains one global variable. So and that global variable is called merge. So I will uh, use uh, this, uh, this uh, include ones and I will uh, uh, say merchant secret.php. So that is, uh, sorry, merge secret it is, merge secret.php. Now this uh, has got one global variable called merge uh, and that contains the merchant secret. So in this segment, let me explain what the merchant uh, secret uh, 
sorry the account secret does and in this case i'm calling it a merchant secret because i am acting as a merchant who's doing the coding so anybody who gets an account uh, with us uh, will get this uh, mer- uh, account secret which in this case i'm calling as merchant secret sorry for repetition and um, that has to be used in two places usually one is of course uh, when you're checking your mails uh, you have to give your account secret here it's a it's a it is a password effectively but it is more than a password because we have not given a username and a password system instead we have combined it together to call it as an account secret now the second place where you need to use uh, this is when you are trying to configure your account so in that you have to give that particular uh, account secret here and uh, uh, you can configure your account by sending various commands like so one of the commands which as a merchant which you are interested in uh, would be this particular command called make merchant Now the make merchant command has got two parameters domain name and ip address so it conveniently writes down the keyword for you and uh, uh, i will write demo dot known dot email and i will write the uh, what is that the ip address of that particular uh, uh, server from where i will be calling the api functions for this particular domain now i'm not going to press uh, submit here because i've actually just typed on gibberish in the account secret if i press submit it will say that the account does not exist so uh, that's because i i forgot to first copy it into the clipboard but this is what you have to do you have to first make sure that uh, our system that is a known email system knows that you are getting ready uh, to call the api calls and we need to know who you are so obviously you need to have an account with us and you need to give the uh, these two values so you have to separate it by sp- spaces right this is one space here and there is another space here okay so you have to uh, give these two values the description is given here what uh, how this works and if you didn't give this for example if i did not give this and i just submitted again it will say account not exists because i have not given the actual secret anyway so this is the second place where the account uh, secret is used and the third place is used by merchants when they call the api so if you see the api call has to have the merchant secret and that gets used in the header uh, of the call which you send to our server so see you in the next segment okay now let's move on to the next step in this step uh, after having a, a way to retrieve the merchant secret that is account secret for the merchant let me now uh, do a small test and call the api now if you see the sample code which i had showed you that and i copied it here if you remember i had showed you how we have written a very simple uh, api testing routine and inside that we have given the sample code so if you go to line number 107 there is this specific api call which actually it gives you uh, the public key of the user who is going to provide their alias so let me quickly test that so what i will do is that i'll just copy that um, that particular statement and then i'll bring it over here and of course i have to make sure that uh, these values are right so this is actually merch as i said uh, the domain so let me parameterize it so i'll write the domain as uh, demo.known.email that is the domain which i am uh, calling this particular code and the alias is uh, for now i will use my own alias uh, which is abu francis now this particular uh, value is called the action so let me parameterize that also and i'll say action is equal to pk it stands for public key now pk is a public key which is provided by the user who is now assume let's assume that he has come to your website and he's now trying to enter so he is given that alias and uh, uh, he has earlier to that he has saved his public key into his own account and this particular api fetches that public key uh, from our server now there are two three other options by which uh, the public key can be retrieved which i will uh, get to later or you can read it in the documentation for now let's assume that the user has saved his public key at uh, his account at uh, known.email and we as a merchant uh, the, the developer is now calling for that particular alias uh, public key so now what i will do is i will just echo this and see what happens so i will go here to this and i will click on this and it immediately gives me a json block a json string which i will convert later on as a uh, json object and uh, if you see it is uh, gave a message that public key has been sent over this user id is the important one now as a merchant you should never use the alias which that user gives because the user is uh, free to keep changing his alias whenever he wants to Uh, but as far as you are concerned since you are uh, trying to give him entry into your system you need to identify that person right so this would be the name which you would uh, uh, store this is you can say effectively his user identity and in this data block it is is where you get the actual key uh, of that public key which uh, was set by the user then the success message is true there is no error and it also gives you two values one is the number of free coins which is available in your account we keep giving free coins so that you can actually play around with our system and this is the amount of coins which has been paid uh, into that particular account so these uh, free coins are used by automatically uh, or rather all the coins are used as per the elastic usage of your uh, account that means as as long as you are sending each uh, api call it'll keep deducting a few uh, coins and first it'll try to consume it from the free coins part and then it'll start consuming from the paid coins okay so it still says demo coming soon so i'll remove that and then i will also change uh, something here and let us go back here firstly let us see what happens if i give a f- alias which is not existing 
and what happens to that so if i for instance it says user does not exist here and the error type is seven you still get to know what your free coins are and all that so the user is no longer existing so obviously you won't get the user id so you need to check it first for this success whether the success is true or false so again let me go back here and let us write that code for that so what i will do is i will say i'll first convert it into an object and i will say uh, object is equal to json decode as false so this false ensures that i can access it as an object and i'll say if uh, uh, object uh, success then i will do whatever i need to do here and else i will say uh, echo uh, sorry this did not work uh, again i will try it out with another alias and come here and it'll say sorry this did not work right so that system is working and if this is here and i will write the code here for uh, for generating an otp now this is going to be pretty interesting how the otp is going to be generated so for generating the otp which i will then later on encrypt and send as a message to that particular uh, user what i will do is that i will invent a pepper a pepper is some additional um, in, in hindi we'll say additional masala like we place inside just to obfuscate or you know mangle the hashing a little bit further so what what the strategy would be is that i will take uh, the time the current unix time and then i will uh, 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 use the user id uh, which uh, uh, what was that uh, user id i forgot i think i should have actually okay let's do that let's uh, echo the the string here once again i'm sorry i forgot my own syntax so i will just run this again uh, yeah so the object uh, field name is called user id with all small letters so what i will do is i will uh, sorry uh, i press some wrong key so what i will do is i will construct a, a hash I, I'm using MD5 here, but you can use uh, SHA-256 if you're really scared of things. And then I will add uh, o uh, OBJ uh, user ID, and I will add uh, the pepper. Now, now what is the pepper? Pepper is something which you add just to uh, make sure that whatever you have created is very unique uh, to you. I mean, actually, just the uh, timestamp and the user ID would have been sufficient. But uh, mm, uh, what we'll do is that we will. Uh, for the time being, we'll assume that this particular uh, uh, thing needs to be more secure. So now, how do you get the pepper? So one way to do that is to just arbitrarily create a global variable called pepper and just put some some random strings in that. So this will always get added to this particular uh, hashing. So the, the hashing is done using the timestamp, uh, the user ID, and the pepper. Now, the user ID, uh, you should not expose to anybody else. There's no real harm if you do expose it. But it is best that you do not expose that. Now, uh, Mm, come to think of it, uh, let me invent a system where I don't use the timestamp, but I actually expose the user ID. Let's let's be a little bit more adventurous. And the actual uh, ha uh, message uh, OTP, uh, which I will send, would be. Uh, oh, let me capture it into a proper variable. One minute. So I say user UID is equal to this, and I I use that, and I say the OTP is actually a comma delimited string where the uid comma the hash is given to the user now how does he get that so i'll write echo otp okay so let's see what uh, this leads to let us go back to our demo code and run that and now this is otp which will be sent to that particular user okay now the user is uh, going to receive this otp now where does he receive it he will receive it in his own inbox so he will be going to uh, his uh, sorry he goes to his inbox i i type that i in a different way and obviously it will not go to that server so he goes to that inbox and then he gives his account secret and he refreshes his uh, he refreshes his um, messages and that's where he will uh, get that message so let us uh, uh, right uh, i'm searching for those messages so i refresh the inbox and uh, these are the regular messages in the encrypted section uh, there will be one more message which will come here but right now i've not sent it I, it is just demon uh, showing the otp on the screen so that otp on the screen is uh, obviously uh, uh, not sufficient to you that uh, otp has to reach that guy uh, inside this encrypted message itself uh, 
just showing it on the screen is dangerous because uh, how does a merchant know uh, that it was uh, the same person who's coming we have to establish a confirmation loop right so the otp should actually never be displayed the way i did just now and uh, uh, one minute where are we 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 demonst- uh, we this, uh, displayed the otp here right let me make it a little bit more explicit but please do not do this because in this case if there is some uh, villainous character some some thief some hacker and he happily gave uh, i mean he discovered the alias which somebody was using and he used that alias and then uh, happily the the otp is getting displayed here itself so obviously that is a, a major insecurity this is only for explaining the code i'm showing the otp here but the otp should be actually be sent uh, into that particular person's inbox a special inbox and it should appear here inside this so let's uh, uh, let's uh, do that and uh, uh, let me set up things and i will talk to you in the second segment sorry not the second segment the next segment okay the next section is where i will be explaining how to actually send the otp which got constructed and uh, how does it go into uh, that particular uh, user's uh, inbox now firstly i will just make some uh, housekeeping here so i'll just write this as a message the otp message here say, saying otp so and so and now what i'll do is uh, uh, let me explain the strategy inside a comment so i need to uh, do two things here oops sorry I need to do two things here. One is I need to encrypt the OTP using the user's uh, PGP public key, and the second is uh, send that encrypted OTP to the user's special uh, known email inbox. Right? These are the two things which I have to do. Now, where is the pub- uh, PGP public key? So the PGP public key is uh, inside this object. Remember, we had retrieved the PGP public key using this action, right? This action PK. PK stands for public key. So we got the public key by saying that this is the public key that's in the data. Sorry, this microphone is coming in my way, so I'm not able to see properly. So I'll say pub is equal to so and so, and so I've got the public key. Now, how do I encrypt it? Now, ideally, uh, and let me put that also in- into a comment. Ideally, you should you should encrypt. Uh, Uh, the message message using pgp uh, here yourself but if you are want to quickly try out something we have an api helper function now this is not recommended why it is not recommended it is like this that on one hand i say that the otp should not be told to anybody you don't echo it on the screen and and uh, you should actually encrypt it and send it to the user so it's actually an end to end encryption only the user can decrypt it but now what i'm doing is that i'm going to use a helper function where i give the plain otp to my server that is known email server um, to our server there and the server has got a nice uh, little helper function and that helper function does the encryption for on my behalf now that is like a, a not really recommended because theoretically our server at known email is coming to know what your otp is of course we will not do anything but uh, I, it's my duty to tell you that uh, that particular otp has got exposed and it is not really end to end but for now since we uh, don't want to make it more complex on how pgp encryption is done uh, because the pgp encryption is a very standard ex- encryption and and that way of en- encrypting is available in pr- all the computer languages here it is in php even in php there are two three ways by which you can do pgp encryption you can also do it in node.js python whatever language uh, you happen to be developing in you can actually encode something in the pgp uh, method and we our documentation has got details of that if nothing works there is a very simple bash script which you can use and then using that bash script you can actually encrypt a message so for that your server should have a, a pgp installed in the server and your bash script should be able to access that installed the binary executable so anyway so right now let us not be so nitpicking we will say that we will use that particular helper function given by the known email people and that and helper function is this in line number 141 it all comment here you can see it is written here so i will copy that and then i will start using it here and um, so the merchant secret of course is called merch and that was there inside this the dom is the same the alias is the same the action is enc and we got the public key but the encrypted message is now called otp so i will do this and then i will um uh what do you say uh i'll say echo s right and let's see what happens so now what i will do is i did this earlier but i'll do it for you uh once again uh so let me now open the browser and uh, refresh it this is earlier message and you see that uh, oh that earlier otp is also there i'm sorry i had i thought i had okay so if you see it is actually encrypted and given it the encrypted message under data so that's uh, what this does so at, after this particular call uh, it will give you give me the encrypted message so now i'll create the second object and i say json uh, decode s and i will 
uh, I need the encrypted message. So encrypted message is equal to OBJ2, sorry, oops, data, right? I'm not looking at the keyboard, so my microphone is coming in front of me. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a bug over there. Okay, so I got an encrypted message. Let me now just echo the encrypted message. And let's see how that looks like. Oh, it has not got saved. Let me wait for it to complete. Okay, now it should be working right. Okay, so I got the encrypted message. Now this is a message which has to go into that person's inbox. And let's see how we do that. So let me first uh, go back to the sample code. And uh, we use this particular thing to get the encryption done. And now we will actually send this particular API call here and uh, use that to actually do the final sending of the message uh, to that person over there who was who, who gave that alias. So I'll comment this and again this is not merchant secret it is just merch. So I'll write merch here domain alias all same this is this action is now called EE it means encrypted email and uh, there has to be a subject line for it. So I will create a subject line and sorry uh, God they should invent an invisible microphone. Okay, so encrypted subject, I will say here is your welcome. Here is here is your OTP, right? And uh, this is called uh, enc message, not a uh, message enc. So I will copy. Sorry, I will copy that, and I will come here and replace that variable. There it is. So now what I have done effectively is I have sent this message uh, to that person's inbox. And that too in the encrypted section of the inbox. Once again, let me remind you, this is not a very perfect solution. This is a temporary solution where the uh, the PGP encryption of your OTP was done by our server, that is the known email server. Then it is not really a end-to-end -end encryption. But frankly, for many people who are just starting off and just working out uh, how, how to use the system, uh, this is good enough. Uh, but again, it is my responsibility to tell you that this is not what you should do. You should actually, ideally, you should encrypt the message yourself here using the PGP system. Uh, nevertheless, we reached till here and now the messages got deposited once you call this. So let me just echo this part of the story where you are, uh, sorry, echo. Uh, so now let me prepare my system and then I will take you to the next segment. Okay, in this segment, I will finally show how that encrypted message finally reaches that user's own special inbox. Uh, before I uh, move on to the, uh, to showing you the actual uh, inbox and uh, showing how that particular message reaches there let me summarize what we have done till here what we did is right in the beginning we picked up the sample code which is there on our website and that sample code has got everything which is needed for you to just simply start uh, copying pasting from there and then you can get all your api calls here uh, in that sample code there is already this ready-made code available to call the rest function uh, which you can just simply start using so the api call is actually executed by this particular function and it has got certain parameters the first of which is the um, merchant code or rather the account uh, secret which the merchant has that is that merchant code now uh, what we did so far is that we first uh, use this action as pk that is the api action uh, pk means uh, get the public key of the user and then we retrieve the public key and then what we did we of course checked whether it was a successful call and the public key was retrieved and then we then encrypted a uh, an otp we created an otp by uh, putting together a pepper along with the user id and then the OTP itself is a UID comma the actual hash. And later on, we'll be able to you know separate out these two uh, a, uh, parts of that uh, OTP. Then we'll check whether this o o UID actually generates this particular hash. And that pepper is used to make sure that uh, the MD5 is not going in plain sight. So it gets, uh, nobody can actually reverse engineer it. Now what we did after that is that we encrypted uh, that particular OTP using the public key. Ideally, we should have done it using uh, your own code. But for now, uh, we are using a helper uh, API uh, given by the known email people. And we use that to actually encrypt the message. Once a message got encrypted, now the job is to really send that message to that user. Now you cannot do this. This is not to be done. Let me emphasize that this should not be done. Uh, OTP should only go into to the user's inbox. And that is done using this particular uh, API call. So basically there are three API calls. And now let us see how that uh, is done. So I'll just save this and then I'll come here and I'll go to the known email and I will, uh, first I will, uh, this is where the user is working, right? So I'll have to click on this and uh, uh, if you notice that it gave this message saying that the encrypted message has been posted and uh, 
it also tells you what is the current state of your coins now if you notice if you were a little observant you would see that this number actually didn't change and the reason it didn't change is because uh, the user with whom we are trying out all this is the merchant himself and in that case uh, the, the no coins are deducted so you can keep doing endless uh, testing and all that with your own account and check whether everything is working out the way you wanted it and once you open it up to the public and they use their allies uh, then uh, you will see that this uh, initially the free coins will keep getting deducted based on how much uh, our current pricing is and then later on once this becomes zero then the paid uh, coin starts working so now let's go to the protected inbox and i've set up the everything here and I refresh it. So you will see that it says that there's one unencrypted, uh, sorry, encrypted message. I come here and it says, sure enough, demo.known.email has sent one encrypted message. So I click on that. And now I have to make sure that the PGP key, I have to give the password here. Otherwise, for the PGP key, that's a second password which uh, that user has to remember. Now, if this was not given, then it will not work. It will say that uh, something is wrong. Uh, the, the, the encryption didn't work. And uh, if I now click here, you will see that it takes a little bit of a fraction of a second when it is decrypting it. So as far as the user is concerned, they are not really involved in the encryption, decryption or anything. They can actually can see this. Now, this is safe because this is happening inside that person's own inbox and it can only happen once that person gives uh, his uh, account secret here. And also he gives the PGP key uh, password here, the passphrase here. So unless both are done, this particular uh, message would not open. Let me just uh, do that. Let me remove this particular password and see what happens. If I now click on this, the subject line comes here. If I now click here, it will say passphrase is empty now what happens is i let me put some uh, arbitrary uh, password not the actual one and now see what happens it will try to open but it says sorry decryption did not work maybe it was encrypted with an older pgp key the the user is free to actually keep changing his keys whenever he wants to so uh, this is, assumes that maybe it was an older key i don't know i don't know how to open this particular message so there you have it there is a very simple method by which an otp can be sent to the inbox of that user and this is where the user's inbox uh, comes now let me put it back let me put the correct password one minute and uh, now if i click on this it will open up now this is also not very a uh, nice way to this uh, to you know show some otp so let me refine this otp by not really giving this but what i will do is i will create a actual link which that person can click so let me create a link um and i'll say um a href is equal to let me invent one this thing called check otp php and otp is equal to that and uh, here uh, click here to uh, enter our service for today now what i do is i just say otp is link you can probably write some more messages over there whatever uh, let me write some blah 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 so if you want to send some message to that particular user saying that, uh, you know, you have not updated your um, uh, credit card number or whatever your service was and the, the, all that you can probably add in that. But don't make this uh, encrypted messages too long because uh, it will be a little slow and unnecessarily that person would be waiting. So so we have done this and it is actually going to uh, let me check everything is right. It seems to be right. So I'll just uh, come back here and I will run this again. I'll press enter uh, and it did it pretty fast, I think. I hope I got it right and I'll say refresh this inbox and there it is one more encrypted message has come so if I now click on this it says here is your OTP I open that it says click here to enter our service for today blah 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 now if I click on that you will see obviously that particular uh, module I have not yet written so it says changes you made may not be saved because this page is getting changed so let me open it in another tab sorry so I'll right click I say open it in another tab and it obviously will say that this particular check otp.php is not found. So that is, it is coming back to my server. Oh, I think it, I did not give the actual email address. It's going to itself. So that is not the right uh, link. Ah, I made a mistake. So the link was wrong. I cannot just give this thing. I have to give my, uh, this merchant has to give his uh, own uh, URL, right? I mean, that was a dumb mistake I made. So I let me do that known.email slash. Okay, so that's a right uh, URL. And um, let me run this again refresh it came out very fast and i come here and i say refresh this it'll say one more email has come and here is your otp and this time when i click it should go to demo.known.email but of course we have not written this particular uh, php module where the actual checking of that otp is done so let's uh, uh, that's a final step and after that uh, that person the user is th uh, theoretically allowed to get inside if this particular check fails so this otp now has to be verified uh, so this check otp is a verifier so let us uh, write that and i will do that in the next segment Okay, now we are in the final leg of this whole system where we are going to now check the OTP which that person has clicked in the special inbox. So what I will now do is that I'll go to the trusted WinSCP and on my server I will create a new file and I call it check uh, 
otp.php okay and it will come into the vs code now i will create a php module here now if you notice the what we are going to check is whether this particular otp is correct now that is a comma delimited string right uid comma hash so what i have to now do is firstly i have to recover this otp uh, sorry i have to recover that particular thing so i'll say uh, otp given on the command line is get um, otp and if uh, we can do the refinement later so now what i have to do is i have to explode this right into an array because it's comma delimited so i'll say explode that and uh, now what i'll get is the first part of it is the uid uh, that is how it was constructed uh, sorry and the second part is the hash right now this is a clever way to uh, avoid databases if you notice what i did is that i've actually created the hash by joining a pepper so now i need this pepper even in that module but uh, that pepper i have not refactored it so what i will do is that i will create another file i'll remove it from here and i'll say include once dir um, pepper dot php Okay, and what I will do here is that I will create one more file and I will call that uh, pepper.php on my server. So there is pepper and I'll say php and I just, it just stores this value so I can use it in from both these places. So I can say I'm using it from here and I'm also able to use it from here. So again, I will uh, say include that particular file. Uh, the merchant secret is not needed here because there is nothing which is being called from uh, the known email system here. You're just making sure that the OTP which that person clicked is the same OTP which you had sent to that person. So now I will create a check hash is equal to MD5 and I do the same thing which I do here which is, uh, what did I do here? I made a hash based on the pepper and uh, where is that? Mm, there it is. So I use in the same sequence otherwise obviously the MD5 would be wrong. So I come here and I just uh, paste it here. Is the variable name same yes so pepper came from here and uh, uh, check hash now if check hash is equal to is equal to uh, hash then echo let's make it really big wow welcome my dear user and then balance i leave it to you i leave to the merchant developer to start a session a new session for this user so if you notice uh, it is not used in any database for this OTP generation which is really nice and simple and else it will say echo oh I'm sorry the OTP was wrong that's it now let us go back to our inbox and check this so where is the inbox here we went here and let me close this and we say click here to enter our service for today right that's what I was sent so now I will click here it says wow welcome my dear user fantastic Let's all clap our hands. So that's how the OTP got done. Let us mangle the OTP a little bit just uh, here itself and give some wrong OTP. It says, I'm sorry, the OTP was wrong. So this is a basic strategy which by which a person, a merchant can then allow uh, people into the system. So the, let's make it a little bit more uh, refined, so to speak. So instead of giving the alias here and hard coding it here, what we do is we say uh, alias is equal to request uh, or you say post uh, alias. And let us assume that there is a there is a form in this module. So what I will do is I will just uh, um, I will just put a condition here. If is set post alias, that means it is actually processing that form. Then only all this thing actually gets done. Else I open a bracket, then close the PHP. Oops, sorry. Close the PHP. Open the PHP again and close the bracket here. So else this particular form action is not needed we say method is equal to post and i'm sorry let me do it by peering below the microphone and slash form and i'll say input uh, name is equal to alias uh, please enter your known email alias and a submit button so input type is equal to submit of course, you can always beautify it and make it better and all that, all that. That I leave it to you uh, how to do that. So let's now use a proper form to do this activities here. Fine. So now let's go back here and then we press uh, this particular demo and it will actually show the form. So it says, please enter your known e email alias. If I write some rubbish here, it obviously will say this, that did not work. Now, uh, because there's no such, uh, I mean, that was a message we gave there. Now, if I write here, uh, uh, if I write here, uh, so Abu Francis, that was the, uh, and I click on that, see what happens. 
it'll say okay posted the message and now as a user now i go there i refresh my inbox and i get uh, it says okay one unencry- one encrypted message so i come here click on that and there it is click here to enter our service today i click that and it says wow welcome my dear user now this is a broad uh, strategy but there are one or two, uh, two defects in this if you notice this otp really has not changed because it was the same paper, paper and the same user id so let's make this a little bit more sophisticated and let's uh, make it uh, time uh, also would be a factor inside that otp so how do we do that what we do is we come here and we put in the time factor also into the otp where did i do the otp there so what i do is i say t is equal to time and i add the t also into this and what i do is i actually add the t here inside so it's now that comma delimited strings has got three components in it and then i go to this check otp and i say t is equal to uh, r2 and i obviously have to do this also did i do it in the same sequence let me check that um, no i put the t first so i go back here and i remove it from there and put the t here so this is a much better method where there is a certain amount of randomness so that the hash which get generated would be always different because the time at which people are clicking would be different in fact you can even do something like this and say a current time is equal to time and you say if current time and difference okay let's say diff is equal to current time and this should be in int 12 so because i get a integer equivalent of that so current time minus dollar t if diff is greater than say is how many seconds like let's say uh, one minute would be 60 seconds so let's keep it for one minute uh, then we say echo sorry uh, you came in uh, too late okay and then we exit it here otherwise it'll do all the hashing and i'll say welcome my dear and all that so let's test this out let me just check once again everything has been given the everything is fine so i will just go here and i will again run this again it will say of course give me the alias so i give the alias so this is the user of uh, who is now doing that not the merchant of course this right now both are one and the same but uh, this form is actually can be usable by anybody actually so now i do that it says i mean obviously you need to change this message and make something even better and then you go to the uh, inbox protected inbox uh, the rather the user goes to the protected inbox refreshes it he gets that uh, uh, otp he clicks on that otp here and then he clicks here it says wow welcome my dear user now uh we'll come back to this and refresh this and it at, at after one minute it will obviously it will be timed out and it will say that uh, sorry it is whatever that message was so let me re- uh, recap everything and give you the whole uh, story right from beginning as a summary so to get a person into your uh, beautiful saas application or whatever you are developing as a merchant what you have to do is you have to go to uh, the first thing which you do is you have to go to this particular page which is uh, this particular uh, page which is known.email/api/testapi.php at the bottom of this we have given the source code itself so you click on that and you get the entire source code on how the api call uh, can be done api calls can be done from your server to our server now before doing the actual coding you have to ensure that you went and gave the make merchant command uh, here and uh, the make merchant command was given and and then only the thing so that you have to check what is the make merchant command here and using the make merchant command you can actually read all this instructions what to do and that is how you have set up yourself as a merchant at no email then you copied over that sample code and and kept it in a new file you're not saving it and this sample code you can look at how the api calls have been done it is well documented so we use those api calls and then we use the helper functions which are available here and what we did is that first we checked whether that user existed or not and uh, that was done here by calling the pk action and if that action was successful it, it found out the public key and then you created one otp by the timestamp and uh, some pepper and your uh, the user id of that person so that was created into a convenient link so that that person does not have to really do any copy pasting or anything like that and then uh, it that particular otp was uh, encrypted ideally that encryption should have been done by you but you can use a helper function if you trust us um, it's not recommended otherwise it's not really an end to end encryption but for now for this demo that is fine and then you call one more api so just three apis here in this case usually it will be just two apis because this would have been done by you a- and uh, you call this particular last api and that ends up uh, with the message that the message has been sent uh, to that particular user now let us go back to that uh, uh, inbox i think one minute must have passed and if i now refresh this it will say sorry you came in too late So this is an OTP which actually lasts for only that much seconds. That is, in this case, I put it as sixty seconds. Uh, if you think that is not right, and you should make it uh, say five minutes or something like that, then you should make it uh, five minutes there, and then you come here, and maybe let's clean up this code a little bit more and say. Mm, so here is your OTP, right? So we then make a third JSON object, 
and say json decode dollar s uh, and then say if sorry this false actually this is a correct way to do it just to be very accurate uh, if it is successful uh, echo please check your uh, inbox at known email we have sent you an otp for you to enter our site for today please ensure you come within come inside within 5 minutes from now so this is a nice clean message and let's go back let's do it once more we come here we press enter this is how the user experience now really is you just say sabu francis it will say uh, i made a mistake somewhere something is uh mm what did i do wrong ah this is success sorry that was a problem spelling mistake so uh possibly the message is already reached so i think you would have got what i'm talking about and if i now refresh the inbox it says yes here's a message and uh, you click on this and then you say click here to enter our service for today click on that and it says welcome my dear user and there you are your user has come in right from uh, the uh, from an empty screen with just one line which say that enter your alias right that is how it started right that's all what what you need to do so it says please enter your known email alias and you give your known email and there you are at the end of it you uh, got here where are we we got here welcome now if i waited 5 minutes here uh, that will be unnecessary but if i wait 5 minutes this otp would expire automatically and you will not be able to get into the site so that's it i hope uh, uh, you have understood if there are any questions you please uh, uh, send in your uh, discussions uh, at the discussion forum at discord uh, the link is there on our website right at the top so if you go to known.email uh, right on the top right side is the community so come and interact with us and clarify any doubts uh, we also have a uh, 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 trello board so that link is here and you can then put up your suggestions and issues which you face thank you very much